Hello folks, welcome to this short video walkthrough on an application on the identification or detection of vulvular heart disease disorder. What this application does basically is to detect whether uh, one or four arteries of a individual is blocked or not. That in medical terms is called vulvular heart disease. So why do we require the application in the first place? Uh, common medical literature shows that for a patient uh, <clears throat> to be detected of vulvular heart disease, there are approximately 52 tests that require to be done. So some of them are in the demographic area, as you can see, are 16 in number. And then, then there are also symptoms and examinations that require to be done. On the more expensive side, you would have the ECG that are six in number there are six different types of ECG that require to be done and lastly if you are seeing towards the right there are lab and eco tests that are also 16 in number and various of them that you requires to be done by a medical pack practitioner and they total in number to 52 tests right now from the medical side so these are the 52 tests that require to be done in order to be determined whether a patient has a VHD or he or she is a healthy individual. Now, from this backdrop, what I have done is I have used uh, feature selection algorithms from the machine learning perspective and have determined that among these 52 tests, there are eight tests that are most important to find out whether a person has a VHD. So when I have reduced the 52 tests to 8 tests in number, what it actually means is that I have been able to reduce the cost of diagnosis to a huge extent. And in addition, algorithm uh, <clears throat> that has been utilized from the machine learning front is a, a, a gradient boosting machine uh, to determine whether a patient has a VHD and the advantage of this particular application is that it is highly reliable, highly interpretable of course as I have told you earlier this there is a very low cost involved in it and of course when the doctors utilize it this is an interactive application so there is quick decision making involved in finding out whether the patient has a VHD or not. So let's look at the application uh, uh, pipeline and since this is the very first time that uh, uh, I'll be showing the application so I take through uh, you through a detailed <clears throat> analysis so these are the uh, as I was telling you that there are eight uh, uh, parameters or tests involved in finding out whether a person has a VHD so first is the family history of a person the next would be the pulse rate lung rails and so on and so forth so these are the tests that determine whether a person has a, a VHD or not. Next, let's look at the uh, continuous predictors. What are the distributions of them? So we have two continuous predictors over here. First is the lungs, uh, is the pulse rate, and then uh, the next is the ejection factor. Faction. If you see the distribution. Uh, between the concern and the no con uh, and the no concern area concern mean meaning that the person has a VHD and no concern meaning that the person is a healthy individual you can see that the distribution fairly overlaps one another so the machine learning algorithm to identify correctly identify the patient would be a very complex one this is also interactive in nature if you look at if you look at uh, the graphs you can see that you can actually find out as I hover among them the changing value of the uh, concern and the no concern patients. Let's look at the distribution of the discrete variables next. So what I'm looking at here as I hover across the graph is the proportion of, of people. So in the extreme left graph, what you see is the uh, diastolic murmur over here. Next, what you see is the systolic murmur. And then the third is the lung rail and fourth is the dipnexia. Uh, so 
these graphs show the proportion of the patients you can also uh, create an interactive part over here that shows that if you were to compare the concerned patients over here this is how the proportion of the graph looks like you can also uh, do the <coughs> analysis for the no concern patients and this is interactive in nature so you can see the proportion of them uh, in a better way to find out what is the distribution so that being the third thing let uh, me show uh, how good is the prediction of the accuracy model but before I get into that, let me also show you the complexity of the model. So this is the complexity of the model. So what you see over here is the is the blue lines that shows the healthy patients and the red lines are the, uh, <clears throat> are the uh, patients with the VHD. So as you can see, there are very few red lines over here, meaning that we are literally trying to find out needle on a haystack and complex machine learning algorithms will be involved in this prediction or identification. Next, let me show you the accuracy of the prediction that has been done on a, uh, on a historical data set. Let me explain you how the prediction looks like on the test set. So from the historical data set, we have divided into training, validation and test phase. In the test phase, we have 62 uh, individuals. Some of them would be a patient with VHD and others would be healthy individuals. So among these patients with a VHD, of course, VHD patients would be less in number. So we have nine of them uh, actually with a VHD. The algorithm has been able to correctly identify among these nine, eight individuals. And then what there is a error rate of, of uh, one upon nine uh, and the error rate comes at 11 percent among the uh, uh, among the uh, individuals with uh, who were healthy there were 53 in number among these the ident uh, algorithm has been able to identify 52 uh, correctly as as healthy individuals and one has been identified wrongly as uh, as a person with an VHD when in actual the person did not have an VHD so the error rate in this this case is one upon 53 so this is a fairly good uh, machine learning algorithm that uh, would be uh, to uh, a great extent being able to identify patients with vhd next let us look at the uh, plots of the global model of the uh, of of, of, of identification so the algorithm as I was telling you is a gradient boosting machine that has been used and what is a particular help in this case to the doctors is to find out what are the uh, features or the tests that are most important to identify whether a patient has a VHD so as you can see over here the systolic murmur the and and the ejection fraction and the uh, function class are the three most important variables in finding out whether a person person has a VHD so next uh, is the part at which prediction so let's look at the prediction values that are shown by the algorithm so let's see what the prediction shows us so these on the these sliding bars that you see on the left are those uh, identifying uh, uh, tests that you can actually uh, sort out and put various values for various individuals so right now what you see over here is for a pulse rate of 50 and an ejection fraction of 40 percent and then a lungs reel of uh, of yells uh, yes systolic murmur yes and so on and so forth the the algorithm shows that for the particular individual the prediction is of no concern meaning that the person is a healthy one and if you're seeing the probability part you can see that the probability is 92 percent for uh, for a healthy individual and 
0.07 or 7% only for the VHD patient. So as the probability is higher for the healthy individual, the algorithm predicts that the person is a healthy individual. Now, if we can, if we can also change values for say for the next patient that comes in, we would like to change values and we would like to put in say pulse rate of uh, 120 and an ejection fraction of of 10 percent and let's see what the algorithm tells us let's wait for a couple of moments okay so as you can see over here the algorithm has predicted that the concern or the uh, or, or the person uh, <clears throat> having a VHD has a probability of just over 50 percent and so you can see over here 50.0.9 percent uh, is the is the probability for concern of VHD and the probability for um, for no concern or a healthy individual is is 49.07 percent so as the uh, probability for concern is more than the probability for for a no concern the algorithm predicts that the individual is a, uh, would most probably have a, uh, a VHD next let us look at the interpretation of the model that is As you can see over here, uh, uh, the graph has been developed for the uh, uh, for the explanation of the decision. So this is a particularly of great help to the doctors in finding out uh, how certain tests have have played in terms of support and contradiction to predict whether the person is of of, of concern level or is a person with a uh, or is a patient with a VHD. Uh, As you can see over here, that the systolic murmur with a with a value of yes is is something that supports the decision that the person has a VHD. Also, lungs rails of yes over here. As you can see, the lung rail is yes. And then the uh, diastolic murmur is also yes. They, these actually support the decision that the person is of concern uh, <clears throat> in terms of VHD. And also what you can see is uh, for the decisions uh, that contradict or the, or the parameters that contradict the decision of a uh, Mm, uh, of a uh, concern or a uh, for a PhD is the is the uh, uh, is the parameter values a functional class zero over here as you can see uh, we had uh, actually selected zero and also the uh, ejection fraction of uh, uh, ejection fraction of a ten percent that actually contradicts the uh, the, uh, the decision of a um, concern for VHD. So this is what I have uh, for my side in terms of and <clears throat> application to find out whether a person has a, a, has a, a, a valvular heart disease disorder. In case you are interested, please feel free to reach out to me for more. Thank you for your time.